Hello, loves. You are amazing. There's no doubt about that. I'm Katie Gates, and thank you for being here. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Okay, so what are six things that we can do to increase our overall happiness, especially when we look at the world and the world seems to be in chaos everywhere? A lot of us, if we're honest with ourselves, may even have chaos in our own homes. So how on earth are we to be happy when there's chaos all around us? Well, I have six ways that we can increase our happiness meters on a daily basis. So let's go ahead and jump in. Six ways to increase our daily happiness. So number one, and these are very simple, but they work. Number one, stop for a minute and take deep breaths while focusing on one thing at a time, one thing at a time. A lot of us are in turmoil up here because we have too many things going on. We're focusing on too many things at one time. But the key to this whole thing of happiness and success and da-da-da-da-da is taking one thing honing in on it and making it great. That's really one of, if not, besides, you know, having that go-getting spirit and getting up and just doing it and working hard, that's one of, if not, the most important thing to do if you're trying to reach that peak of success. And that means whatever you have labeled success for yourself, because success is different for everyone. We all have our own definition of what success looks like for us or what success looks like for you. Your definition of success and my definition of success can be extremely different, but they both have one thing in common. Taking the one thing, focusing on that one thing, one thing at a time and making it great. Once we do that, then we can move on to other things. So that's the first way to increase um, our happiness meters because we want those meters to be up, 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 up as hot as they can, not low, right? So take deep breaths daily while focusing on one thing at a time. And that's simply because we tend to become overwhelmed and get lost in plenty. That's really good. We typically become overwhelmed and get lost in plenty. So taking time to stop and breathe deep allows us to focus and helping us to see more clearly. So we gain clarity when we stop, we breathe deep, and we focus on one thing at a time. Number two, accept the happiness virtue. And what is the happiness virtue? I'm sure you've heard it. If you if you haven't heard it, you're hearing it now. <laughs> happiness is found within. Happiness is found in ourselves first, not in other people. Other people can come into our um, space and they can add happiness, but they can't give us happiness. They can't give us the gift of happiness. They can only add to the happiness that we already have within. So just like we're individuals, happiness is an individual thing. It starts within first. Your spouse or your mate or your best friend or whomever can't give you happiness. They can add to the happiness that you already have, but they can't give you happiness on a platter. That starts within. So we're responsible for our own happiness. And that may trigger a lot of people, but at the end of the day, it's the truth. We're responsible for our own happiness. I'm responsible for my own happiness. You're responsible for your own happiness. So that's the happiness virtue. We're responsible for it, right? Um, number three, 
Compliment yourself daily. Doesn't it feel awesome to receive compliments from other people? And I'm not talking about vain compliments. Yeah, we hear things like, oh, you're beautiful and you're gorgeous and this and that. And there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But imagine hearing a compliment like you are so capable of doing anything. You're just amazing at that. How do you do that? That is awesome. You are just awesome. You totally rock, right? Now, imagine hearing compliments like that and imagine how they make you feel. I'm sure you've been told things like that. And if you haven't, I'm telling you now, you rock. You're awesome. You're capable of anything that you put your mind and your heart to. It feels good, right? So... If that feels great coming from other people, imagine what it feels like coming from yourself. Imagine how the how the mind connects to the heart because the two are connected. Imagine when the two connect because the mind is hearing what you're telling it. And then the mind then communicates with the heart. There is nothing like looking at ourselves in the mirror or it doesn't even have to be a mirror. Talking to yourself wherever you are and saying, I am capable of all things great. I am so good at that. And it's not about being conceited. It's about surety. When we look at ourselves or when we speak to ourselves in a positive manner with surety, the mind starts to believe that. And what the mind believes, it becomes, right? Because what we think we are, we become. And then we start to put that energy out. And when we put that energy out, that energy then comes back to us. So if we put out positive energy, we're going to receive positive energy back and vice versa. If we put out negative energy, guess what? We're receiving all of that back. It works the same when we're talking to ourselves. There's nothing crazy about that. Tell yourself how capable you are. So compliment yourself on a daily basis. Look at yourself in the mirror and and tell yourself a compliment that you'd want to hear from other people. So wherever you are, to increase your happiness meter on a daily basis, Start making it a habit to give yourself a compliment that you like to hear from other people. It works. I promise you it works. Number four, have a mood of gratitude. Be in the mood of gratitude. This may sound very familiar to you. Um, A lot of people talk about gratitude. We've seen gratitude journals. We've seen gratitude affirmations. We've heard heard people talk to us about gratitude as like I'm talking to you all right now, but it's a difference to hear about gratitude or to have read something on gratitude and then to read read it and then close the book or to hear it and forget it. But when we operate in the spirit or in the mood of gratitude, And I'm not saying that it's going to happen constantly because that would be perfection. And we know that perfection is not real, it's not attainable. But when we try really hard, when we strive to operate in the mood of gratitude, that's what we get back. Um, When we're grateful, we count our our blessings rather than our problems. When we're grateful, we count our blessings rather than our problems. So in other words, we put more attention onto our blessings rather than our problems. Because at the end of the day, there's somebody who's always having a worse day than you are. You know, we're, most of us here in America, thank goodness, you know, we we have food, we have shelter, We have different opportunities. We can go to school, especially if you're a woman, you have certain rights that other women may not have in other countries. And it's it's easy for us to focus on the things that come in to disrupt our lives on a daily basis. You know, we get up that morning and we're just know we're going to have a great day. (laughs) This happens. 
Uh, I'm a witness. We just know we're going to have an awesome day, right? As soon as we get on the highway, somebody cuts us off or we end up having a flat tire or we get to the office and there's piles of work on our desk that someone else should have did, but they didn't do. So now it's all piled on top of you and not and to make things worse. There's a deadline, right? And you're like, how on earth? This isn't right. So all of those things are stressors. And we know that stress is the cause of not only a lot of diseases, but bad days. Stress mutes gratitude. When we're stressed, we're not even thinking about gratitude or being in the mood of gratitude, if we're honest. But when we're in that gratitude mood, we're focusing on our blessings rather than our problems. And when we make that a habit, guess what? Gratitude becomes a habit. We see things differently. We start judging our situations differently. Okay, yes, this may have happened. And yes, that's a bad thing. And yes, it caused this much pain to me. But you know what? I made it out. I can look at the brighter side. I'm here. I have a heartbeat. I'm breathing on my own without an oxygen tank. I have legs to walk. I have shelter, I have food to eat. Those are focusing on the blessings rather than the problems. Number five, passion, passion, passion. And no, I'm not talking about that passion, but I am talking about passion. To increase your happiness meter or your daily happiness, it's very important to find a passion, your passion. And when you find your passion, hone in on that newfound love. What's one thing that you love to do? It just sets your soul on fire. What is that one thing? For me, I love getting on here and sharing my knowledge with you all. It, it just does something for my soul, my spirit. I feel great when I do it. I love helping people understand um, how the world operates and how we can make it a better place when we change our thoughts up here and in our hearts. So that's one of my passions. What's a passion that sets your soul on fire? You can increase your happiness just by thinking about that and then answering it. Because once you get an answer, you then have the idea or the know-how of, okay, this is my passion. Let me research how I can get started bringing this passion to fruition. It's like a big gift that you're unwrapping finally, because I'm sure you've probably sought your passion or you've heard people talk about it and you've seen other people find their passion and you've sat wondering, you know, well, what am I passionate about? What do I want to do in life? So think about that. And when you get the answer, jot it down. Start researching that passion and work really hard to bring it into reality. So when we find something that we're passionate about and we start doing it, things like art, um, we tend to, to go to the store, we get the art supplies because we're passionate about it. We want to put our whole heart into it. It's a love, that newfound love that we didn't have that now we have. Um, but in order to, to do this and to make it work and for it to increase your happiness on a daily basis, we have to make the investment. So that means not only time and money, but we have to become dedicated to it. We just can't say, well, I'm passionate about da, 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 da. Do it for a week and then put it down. Because that's not going to increase your happiness. That's going to decrease it. Because when we do things like that, we start feeling like a failure. So now we have the feeling or the, the, the negative feelings of now I'm a failure piled on top of everything else that was muting our happiness. So it's very important that once you find what you're passionate about, 
to make the investment with your time, money, and your dedication. Not spending a ton of money. Like I said, if you like painting, go to the art store, get a few things, you know, some canvases, some paint, some paint brushes, and just start doing what you do, right? And lastly, number six, this is the biggest one of all. Um, of course, I do feel like knowing that happiness starts within first is huge, but we can't be happy or understand happiness until we understand that we must release our internal emotional pain and forgive. I know that's a very hard one to swallow. For a lot of people, the art of forgiveness is very hard to paint. It's a hard word to not only say for some, but to swallow. You're telling me that in order for me to be truly happy, I have to forgive that person that did such and such to me? You have no clue how he hurt me or you have no clue what she did to me or what they did to me. And you're telling me you want me to forgive them because that's the only way I'm going to be happy. But you don't know what kind of turmoil I've been living in because they or he or she did this to me when I was a little girl or a teenager or wh whenever. Who are you to tell me that I need to forgive in order to be completely happy? And I'm telling you that I'm saying all of that because I've been there and I've done that. Like I said, if you don't know my story, if you keep watching me, you will. I, I've suffered uh, uh, molestation and different types of trauma and rejection. And oh my gosh, I can just, well, I've written two books. <laughs> I am in the process of writing a third book, but um, I can just go on and on. So that's who I am to tell you that in order to increase your happiness meter on a daily basis and to truly be happy, you must release emotional pain that's just eating you alive inside because that's what it does. It constantly smothers creativity, the mind, pulls on your heartstrings. It smothers the inside. There's no growth when we're emotionally damaged inside. So we have to learn to release that. And I'm going to be doing a video on that very soon. Some key steps to releasing um, internal emotional pain and damage. Because it's something that I've had to do. It's something that I've been through. And I can truly look at you and tell you that I'm healed, delivered, and set free. I have forgiven everyone um, that has brought pain to my life. Um, people that may have touched me um, without my permission that have done things to me. Oh, I can just go on and on. I had to forgive those people in order to receive the happiness that was trying to attach itself to me. So that's number six. In order to be truly happy and to uh, live this life and be happy and increase your daily happiness meter, you've got to forgive. And I'm not saying that it's easy. It is extremely difficult. It's complex. But I promise you, it's, it's, like, it's like that muscle, right? Whenever we, we go to work out and we're lifting little dumbbells or whatever, you know, weights, um, we start to strengthen the muscle. We have to look at forgiveness like that. It's a muscle that needs to be strengthened, a, a seed that needs to grow. But I promise you, once you release that anger, that turmoil, that emotional pain, and you operate in the spirit of forgiveness, look out world you are going to be something to reckon with in a very powerful way in a positive way i promise you i promise you i promise you so i'm katie gates and i've given you six ways to increase your happiness meter like i said we want to be high high up in the red not way down in the black right 
So six ways to increase your happiness meter on a daily basis. I'm Katie Gates. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please do so. Um, hit the thumbs up and let me know um, if you like this content. Drop me a comment in the comment section and I will definitely answer you. Um, share the content. It helps me get the, um, the, the channel out there. More people learn about the channel. Like I said, I love doing this. I am passionate about it and I love you all. Like I said, I'm Katie Gates. Thank you for being here. You are amazing. There's no doubt about that. Bye.